Hello everyone, welcome. Thank you for joining me. It is said that sitting is the new smoking and currently we are sitting way more than ever. Um, this can cause tightness in the hips, which our class is focusing on today. Although all yoga, any type of yoga that we do works the whole, all systems, but we're going to primarily focus on the hips today. And this can also be, cause weakened hips as well. This can lead to low back pain, restrictions in breathing, fatigue, and many other aches and pains. So it is, they also say that the hips store a lot of emotions, the kind that we bury deep underneath, which maybe not don't want to deal with or are really uncomfortable dealing with, such as anger, sadness, which most of us are feeling right now, um, anxiety, fear, frustration, etc. So this practice may bring up these emotions uh, as we're doing it, or maybe even the day or a couple days after. So just have to be aware and be really kind and we breathe through them, allow them to be there. We'll be really mindful and really compassionate and kind to ourselves as we do our practice today. Do this practice almost three to four times a week to help release the physical and emotional tension that we carry a lot in our hips. So the props we need are a couple of, couple of blocks or cushions for the lunge pose. You may need them. Always have a blanket strap close by in case we need them. So let's get started. Remember to listen to your body and do what works for you and feels right for you in your body. <clears throat> Taking your hands in Gyan Mudra, thumb and index finger touching. Sitting in a comfortable position of your choice. Relaxing your seat. Taking a couple quiet moments, as always, to arrive into our body, into our space. Really relax the whole body, drop your weight completely. Feel the body from inside out. And then start to notice the state of your mind in this moment right now. And become aware of <clears throat> the witnessing self, the one that is watching the thoughts, the quiet behind the thoughts, your awareness. Notice how you're feeling emotionally, drop your awareness into the heart center. And maybe you're not feeling anything because it might have it might be buried in the hips because it's too uncomfortable. But just watch. Know that we are beyond our physical sensations and emotions that arise. We're the one that's watching everything. Notice how you feel physically, head to toe, inside out. Become aware of your pelvic region, the lower back, the hips. Notice your breathing. And then we'll do our breathing today on our back. So here you may need your blocks. We're going to start right in a reclined bound angle pose. <clears throat> so if, if it gets too much, we're not going to be here long. You'll take the soles of your feet together, lay down on your back, and let the knees open wide. If this is already feeling too intense, use your blocks to prop them up. Or just be if you're feeling OK. Take your left hand towards your chest, right hand on your lower belly. And let's take a few breaths here, please. 
using the three-part breath, inhale, expanding the lower belly, rib cage, and chest. Exhale, chest in, ribs towards each other, and lower belly squeezes in. So doing this at your own pace. Really let go with each exhale, just surrender and soften to any resistance you may be feeling in your inner thighs, outer thighs, your back. Inhale flexibility, peace, love towards yourself. Exhale, tension and holding. Inhale, light, nourishment, healing. Exhale, letting go of the old emotions, tightness and pain. Feel the earth supporting you, providing you with safety and security. Let's do two more breaths, please. Soften and surrender with each exhale. Take both, take your right hand on top of your left at the heart center. Release the focused breathing now. Feel your heart, your emotional heart, physical heart. And if you'd like to repeat this affirmation here, I love all dimensions of myself. I love all dimensions of myself, or I just love myself, if you're comfortable with that. I love myself, and I'm here for you. And then release the legs, slowly bring the knees together, allow the knees to touch, feet apart now. If you had your props, move them to the side. And I'm just going to read you a quote by Mary Beth LaRue. She's a, I think she's a yoga teacher. She said that hip opening asanas, or postures, teach us to loosen our grip on life and let things ebb and flow. Hipasanas teach us to loosen our grip on life and let things ebb and flow. So for, um, reflect on this intention, um, quote, sorry, so that you can set your intention. Maybe you are, are you gripping onto things and to, 
to life right now especially? Do you need to go with the flow more? Do you need to release all the emotions that are stuck in your tissues and cells? Do you need to release physical tension? Whatever it is for you, set your intention. I intend and fill in the blank. Repeat it three times. And then straighten the legs, release your intention, release your expectations of your practice. Just do a few circles of your ankles and wrists. And then separate your legs as wide as your mat. Take your arms out to the side. You're just going to flop those ankles out as you inhale and then exhale bring the ankles inwards towards each other. So the legs are as wide as your mat, just the ankles moving. Inhale, open, exhale, close. Inhale, open the feet, exhale, toes towards each other. And notice where you're feeling this. Perhaps in your hip sockets. Notice which hip feels more open. Maybe they're both even. Couple more. And release. Bring the legs hip width apart again. Bring your right knee into the chest. Interlace your fingers behind the thigh or around the thigh. And stay here for a few breaths. This gets into the hip socket, into the, the groin, sorry, and the, the hip flexing muscle, which is often really tight on all of us, just from sitting, from doing everything, from walking, running, standing on your feet. And this is the muscle that is related to fight or flight. So if we're stressed, it, it reacts by really tightening up. One more breath, please. And then move that right knee over towards the right shoulder. And just hold on to it again this way. And then squeeze it in and then exhale. Energetically push it away but keep squeezing it in at the same time, holding for a couple, two or three counts, and then relax. And then squeeze in and push that knee away from you, and relax. One more. Squeeze, push the knee away, and release. Cleansing breath. Take a moment to notice the right and the left hip and leg. And already feel a difference in mine. Left knee towards the chest. Take three breaths, please. Using the three part breathing to start to relax the tight muscles and to calm the mind, the heart. Then guide that, hug that knee towards the left shoulder, squeeze it in, and then at the same time, push it away from you. Squeeze and push and release. But you're still holding on. Hug it in and push it the knee away. It's a very small pushing away. It's like a muscle energy technique to release the sacrum. Hug it in again last time and push away at the same time and release. Cleansing breath, release the leg out, feel.
hug both knees in. Squeeze them in. And go to wherever you can. If this doesn't work for you, remember to be really mindful. Listen to your body. Have arms around the thighs. Use a strap, whatever. And then bring the feet down. <clears throat> Let's do some windshield wipers. You can modify by having your feet together or widen your legs almost as wide as your mat. Arms out to the side. Inhale, center, exhale, drop your knees to the left and look to the right. Inhale, center, exhale, to the right, look to the left. Inhale, center, exhale, knees to the left. Go at your own pace now. Remember, there's no rush. Do everything mindfully with full attention. Great warm-up for the hips to do every day. You can even do it sitting up. Keep your knees to the right. Next time you come to the right, you just pause here. And if this is if you're feeling very flexible in this one, you'll lift your right ankle and place it on the left side to give it a little bit of pressure. If it doesn't work, just keep both knees, both feet on the ground. Take three breaths here. Soften your shoulders and your face and jaw. And remember, you can always pause if you're really enjoying this stretch. Stay longer. I encourage you to pause the video, stay longer. Do it often during the day. And then slowly release. In fact, you can use this stretch as a yin pose next time you do your own practice. Drop your knees to the left. If available to you, pick up the left ankle and place it on the right thigh close to the knee and look to your right and notice how this side feels. Breathe please. Exhaling the tension. Be aware of which side feels more open. No judgment, just, just awareness. That's all that's needed. And then slowly come to center, engage your core as you come up. Allow your knees to touch. Pause for a moment. And then with your knees bent, right ankle on the left thigh for, for figure four or thread the needle for the hips. Interlace your fingers around the left thigh or use your strap if you need to. Pull that left thigh in and press that right thigh away using that right elbow. Flex your right foot. I chose to do this pose and not pigeon pose because many of us are very hard to get into pigeon pose. Maybe another class. I do have other classes on my channel that, that do have pigeon poses, but today I wanted to focus on this. Feel the stretch on your right outer thigh, right glute and hip, and breathe here, please. Start to rock, slow rocking, gentle side to side. Continue to breathe.
and then make circles, small circles, going clockwise first, as you're still in the pose, and then circle the other way. Pause again and come to steadiness. Breathe. And release the posture. Again, allow the knees to touch and just feel. Being aware of any shift in your energy. Let's do the other side. Do what works for you on this side. Flex your left foot, pressing that left elbow into the left inner thigh, and pull the right thigh in. Now take a moment to notice this side. Notice your left glute, hip and outer thigh. As you breathe, take your breath in to imagine you have lungs in your hips. Send fresh oxygenated blood here. And then start to rock gently side to side. And make circles clockwise. And circle the other way. And come to steadiness. Breathe. Soften your shoulders, your face. Relax your jaw. Just take a swallow to relax your throat. Remember to breathe into any tight spots, any resistance, and, and soften the grip with each exhale. And then release the posture, knees touching, feel. Take, interlace your fingers behind your right thigh, lift that right leg up to the ceiling, only go to the point where you're feeling a deep stretch on your back of your right thigh. Take a few breaths here. Keep your right bottom down. Don't lift it up. Point and flex your foot if you like. And then just bend and straighten the knee. Just getting into the hamstrings, which also get really tight. If the hips are tight, everything is connected. One more breath here. And release. Other side. Left leg up. Notice this side and how it feels. Flex your foot. Remember, you can use your strap if you can't reach the the back of the thigh. Flex and point if you like. And then just bend and straighten the knee. And stay up for another one full breath. And release. Cleansing breath. Pause. Shift your hips to the right, drop your knees to the left, just for a little spinal twist, a warming twist. Inhale, flexibility, exhale, tension and holding, look to your right. And then 
Come back to center. Pull the belly muscles in as you come back. Shift your bottom to the left. A couple inches and drop your knees to the other side, to the right side. And stay here for a few breaths. Looking to the left. Top. Your right hand can be on the top knee. Nourishing this side with your inhale. Exhale, release and relax. And then come to fetal position on your right. Pause for a moment. Come up to sitting. Oh, yeah. Sit cross legged. Actually, let's. So, you're going to sit. Because we have tight hips, it's really recommended that we should sit on a block or folded blanket to raise our hips up and tilt the pelvis forward. Bring your, the soles of your feet together here. And then bring the feet in as close as you can. Either hold on to your toes or your feet or your ankles, whatever works for you. And we're just going to start to flap. So this is titliasana or butterfly pose, sitting in bound angle pose or badkonasana. And just flap those wings, inhale and exhale. And notice where you're feeling it. Perhaps in your inner thighs, your groin, inner outer hips. Good practice to do regularly, every day if you can. Or every other day. They say to do 100 a day. But you listen to your body and do what works for you. We're all probably almost at 40 now, I think. Not counting, but let's do a few more. Inhale and exhale. And then relax. Take a moment to feel the, any flow of energy moving upwards towards the crown. And then inhale, lengthen your spine. Exhale, come to slight forward bend. So if you have any back problems, Maybe you might want to, you're already feeling it. Just stay seated. Really listen to your back. We're not going to be here long, but just stay and take a few breaths. Starting to get into the inner, inner thighs and the inner hips here. Inhale. Exhale. One more breath, please. And then come to center. Bring your knees together. Maybe just come off your blanket or lock and just do a few more windshield wipers. Be mindful of your hips. And then we're going to come into cat-cow. <clears throat> Support your knees with a blanket if you need to. So let's do a few cat rolls. Pull the belly in. And then inhale, drop, leading the heart towards the front. Exhale, start pulling the lower belly, mid belly, and upper back in. Exhale, dropping the belly. Go at your own pace and in peace. Warming the spine.
and then we're going to move your hands just one inch forward and start to make a few hip circles. So make small circles going small circles going clockwise first. Just to warm up first. Inhale. Exhale. And if you'd like, you can repeat this affirmation. I allow my emotions to flow. Repeat that quietly to yourself. I allow my emotions to flow. Making the circles larger if you can. Maybe going all the way to your heels. Maybe not. Listen to your body. Maybe getting into the upper body. I allow my emotions to flow. Coming back to smaller circles. And then start to circle the other way, starting from your tailbone. Focus your attention at the tailbone. Keep your eyes closed, making the cir circles a little bigger. When you're ready, If you can, going towards your heels, listen to your back, listen to your body. And this side might be different, so we need to pay attention. I allow my emotions to flow. Starting to close the circle, making it smaller. And then just take a child pose to release. Knees can be wide. Support your head with your blocks. Cleansing breath. And then come up and just notice how you feel. Just feel the flow of energy. And then let's transition to from downward dog to coming up. Curl your toes. You can always use a chair for downward dog. Remember, make your practice your own. And then engage your core, lift your knees up and your bottom up. Keep your knees bent if you need to. Stay here for a few breaths. Maybe press the heels down, maybe not. Feel the ground underneath your hands and your feet and feel grounded, safe and secure. And then start to walk your feet nice and slow, coming into a forward bend, keep your knees bent. Inhale, exhale here. And then slowly uncurl your spine. Roll your shoulders up, back and down as they come up. Come up to standing. Ah, cleansing breath. So standing right underneath your hips. Inhale, right arm up, left hand on your left thigh. Just a side stretch here to warm up the side body. Breathe in and breathe out also gets into your hips. And release. Other side, left arm up. Bending over to the right, pressing that left hip away from you. Long, smooth breath in. And long, smooth breath out. And 
This is another nice stretch to do every day if you can, especially if you have low back tightness, which could be from the hips. So we're targeting the QL muscle, quadratus lumborum muscle there. So slowly come up to center, and that muscle often gets really tight, causing low back pain. Pause for a moment. And then take your hands, maybe your feet a little wider than your hips. Hands can be fingers, like hands on your low back, fingers pointing downwards. So then take your hips forward, to the right, back, and left. And more hip circles, right, forward, right, back, left. Try to focus on the hip area. Once you've got the hang of it, allow the movement to be fluid. I am open to my feelings or I allow my emotions to flow. Keep your hands on your lower back, listen to your back. And then other side, hips to the right, front, left, back. Right, front, left, back. And then when you're ready, put all those four points together and enjoy. So our hips are meant this pelvic area, the hips are meant to move. They're not meant to be static sitting all day long. No wonder sitting is the new smoking. So coming back to center. <clears throat> so next time you wanted to do a figure eight, you can do a figure eight. Maybe let's do three rounds on each way. That might be more challenging. And then just going the other way takes a little coordination. And then come to center. And then open your legs wide. As wide as you can go, coming into Utkat Kon Asan or Squat Goddess Victory Squat. And then allow your knees to facing face the same direction as your toes, coming into a squat. And here we're going to just gently start to bounce. Have your hands at your heart. Inhale, arms up. Continuing to bounce in this pose. Tuck your tailbone under, inhale up, exhale down. Make this your own. You can go sideways. Maybe you can just wave those arms sideways, allowing it to be a fluid movement. Make circles with your arms, whatever works. This is your yoga. Maybe rock the hips sideways. Imagine you're holding a big moon and take it over to the left. Breathe. Take it over to the right. Again. Connecting with the water element and the sacral chakra, which is the hips are part of the sacral chakra. So come to steadiness and pause for a moment. Feel the thighs working, and then slowly release. Bring the legs together. Pause for a moment and feel the flow of energy. And then take your right leg forward, right foot 90 degrees, left foot in about 45. You can use a chair here for support if you need to, all right? Hips facing forward, coming into triangle pose. Another great way to stretch and, and strengthen the hips too. Inhale, arms up. Exhale to shoulder level. Reach the arm, right arm to the right as much as you can, and then drop it in front of your right leg or on the seat of the chair. If your back is not happy today, have your left hand on your hip. If your neck is not happy, look down or straight ahead. But looking up will strengthen the muscles of your back. 
If everything is going all right, left arm can be stacked on top of your left shoulder. Tuck your lower belly in and up, navel in and up. And breathe. I'd like you to roll that left hip forward and the right ribs back at the same time. So right ribs back, left hip forward. Listen to your body. Coming to center, to stay in the same position. Just do a little warrior two here, palms up and then palms down. Bend the right knee over the right ankle. And then before we do the other side, yeah, we'll do the wide-legged squat, um, wide-legged forward bend after. So let's move on to the other side. So just turning the left foot out 90 degrees, right foot in 45, hips square to the front, hands to the heart, open the arms wide. Let's do the palm, let's do warrior two first here on this side, palms up and then palms down, bend the right knee over the, the left knee over the left ankle and look at your left middle fingertip. Drop your tailbone down. Breathe in and breathe out. I am alive, connected and aware. Another affirmation for you to ponder on or reflect or repeat. I am alive, connected, and aware. And then straighten that left leg, engage the quads, left arm to the left, drop it in on a seat of the chair or in front of the left leg. Modify your right your posture by right hand on your on your hip or do the full pose. Lower belly in and up, navel in and up. Right hip forward and left hip back. Sorry, right hip forward and right ribs back. Well, the left hip is kind of going back. Please be compassionate to yourself and kind. If your back, if anything is hurting, never go to the point of pain. That only causes more pain. One more breath. Engage your core, slowly come up. Stay in wide-legged stance and feel for a moment. <sighs> Release. And then coming into wide-legged forward bend, toes in slightly and feet out, hands on the hips. Inhale, lengthen up, exhale, pull the lower belly in and up, navel in and up and hinge forward from the hips. Here you may want to use your block to have your hands on. You may need to go wider, maybe not. And just drop your head down and the weight in the front of your feet. Take a few breaths here, calming everything down. Pulling the thighs backwards. Lifting the kneecaps. One more breath, please. And coming down to the floor in your own comfortable position, or you can come into a Malasana Yogi squat. But we're coming into a lunge now, so you may need your blocks here. Bringing your right foot forward, and you may need to pad your left knee. Pull your toes back, your heels back, and then drop your knee down. Make sure that your right knee is right over the ankle, all right? So Anjanasana or lunge pose. And, and listen to your back. If, this is, if you need to use the blocks this way or your cushions or even use a chair 
having the foot underneath the seat on the seat of the chair, hands on the chair. Let's stay here for a few breaths. And here I'd like to really engage your glutes. You can even have your hands on your on your on your back for support. Squeeze the glutes, in pulling the hips towards each other. Inhale, exhale. This is a great pose to do almost every day. This really helps to open up the front hips, the, the psoas or the hip flexing muscles, which is responsible for that fight or flight. Every time we get upset or stressed, it goes into that fight or flight mode and tightens up. And this will help to lengthen it. And this attaches to the back and the diaphragm, which no wonder if it's tight, it causes lower back pain and difficulty in breathing. Engage your core and slowly switching sides. Find your pose. Inhale, squeeze the glutes together and exhale. And it's okay to use blocks. You don't need to be a hero and, and do what everybody else does. We need to listen to our backs. Those of you that are, are open today in your hip flexors, you can always raise your arms up too if you'd like to go deeper. Squeeze the glutes though. Breathe. Soften. This is the pose where you really need to surrender and soften the grip. Even as you're engaging the hips towards each other, this is for stability. You still want to relax other parts of the body that are not being used. One more breath. And engage your core. Feel free to do a downward dog if you like. I'm just going to come down. Just lay on my belly for a little bit to rest. If you are doing the same as me, legs can be as wide as your mat, toes out, heels in, forehead on the arms. Exhale with a sigh. <sighs> Relax the legs. Be kind. You've done a lot of hip work. It's still a little bit more to go. One or two more breaths, please. Come up to seated now. <clears throat> Again, take your, your blanket to sit on or your block, block, and then bend your right knee, cross it over the left. So this is half spinal twist or Urdha Matsyandrasana. And it'll really get into the outer thigh and hip. And then wrap your left arm around or hold onto the knee or around the elbow around the right knee. Take your right arm up, engage your core, tuck that lower belly in and up. Start to twist from your lower belly all the way back, wherever you can, pulling that right thigh in. Breathe here.
This is getting into the whole spine, the upper back, the shoulders, the neck, the glutes and the hips. One more breath, please. And then bring your head to center and we'll switch sides. All my papers are flying around. Bend the left knee, cross it over. Hold on to the left knee or elbow around the left knee. Left arm up, engage your core and then start your twist from the lower, lower belly, mid belly and upper back. Breathing in deep, exhale deep. I am alive, connected, and aware. Turning the corners of your mouth up to relax the facial muscles. One more breath. Remember to listen to your body. Make it your own. Pause if you need to and stay longer. And then release the posture. Take a moment to feel. And we'll come into bridge pose now. First, we'll do a little active bridge. Don't know if you'll have time to do more, but bring your heels in and their hip, legs are hip width apart. Heels in so your fingers can touch your heels. Tuck the lower belly in and up. So do a little pelvic titch. You can feel your bottom moving upwards a little bit. Then lift your bottom up, allowing the chest to chase your chin. Stay here. For a few breaths, draw the tailbone towards your knees. This is getting into the hip flexors, stretching them out again. If you want to go deeper, release into the upper back, which will help you release anyway, but interlace your fingers underneath and roll the shoulders towards each other. Otherwise, keep your hands flat on the ground. Inhale and exhale. I am alive, connected, and aware. Finishing up. Slowly come down one vertebrae at a time. Tailbone is last touch the floor. Cleansing breath, open mouth, sigh. Notice how you feel. And then bring the knees towards each other into, half, into happy baby. So you're gonna take your arms on the inside, hold onto your ankles, you're, you're bending the knees so that your shins are parallel to the wall. Whatever you can grab, your feet, ankles, shins, even the backs of the thighs, pull the knees towards the floor, all right? So do what works for you. And again, start to do a little rock here. Breathe, pull the knees down. This is also getting into the hips. And then slowly release. Feet down. Pause for a moment. And then you'll find your variation of the reclined spinal twist. 
You can use your blocks here. You can do either one knee, bringing the foot, right foot on the left side, and then just dropping that right knee on the block and take your right arm over to the right side, look to your right, or you can do both knees, whatever works for you. Or you can have your knee between the block, especially if your back is not happy, feeling very strong today. I am free and clear. Or I am clear and free. Hmm. Paying attention to those sighs that want to be released. To really let go of them. Remember to stay as long as you want in, in each pose. Otherwise, come and join me to do the other side. Bring your head forward first. Engage your core. Then slowly come to center. And we'll switch sides. Shift your bottom to the left. And do what you did on the other side. This side may be different, you may need to use a block. I feel clear and free. I feel clear and free now. And I'm grateful for everything that is here for me right now. Even the pain, it is there to teach me something that I need to change or move through so that I can move into the light, become the light. Two more breaths, please. Let go of tension now. And then when you're ready, slowly come back to center. Remember to pause and stay longer if you want. And we'll come into Shavasana now. So support your, your knees if you need to. Get warm, put your jacket on, and then start to lay down or lie down. And let go of all the tension. And I'm just going to read you a poem by Rumi, my favorite poet. as you rest on your back. Soften your, your head down. Let go of your shoulders. Relax your arms. Softening into your upper body, upper back and upper chest. Smiling into your heart. Relax your mid-belly and mid-back. Soften the lower back, the hips, the whole pelvic girdle that has worked, gotten a lot of work today. Release the hips, the legs, the thighs, and the knees and ankles and feet. And 
This poem is called The Guest House by Jalaluddin Rumi. This being human is a guest house. Every morning a new arrival, a joy, a depression, a meanness, some momentary awareness comes as an unexpected visitor. Welcome and entertain them all, even if they are a crowd of sorrows who violently sweep your house empty of its furniture. Still, treat each guest, guest honorably, as he may be bring, clearing up you out for some new delight. The dark thought, the shame, the malice, meet them at the door laughing and invite them in. Be grateful for whoever comes because each has been sent as a guide from beyond. Completely let go now.
I am a pure being. I am clear and free forever. I am this pure, peaceful being, free forever. Notice any feeling of openness in your hips, any expanded state of awareness. Accept whatever is there, as Rumi said, embracing everything that comes. Please do stay longer if you like, otherwise start to wiggle your fingers and toes, Gently rolling your head from side to side. Engage your core and bring the knees into your chest and rock from side to side. Resting on your right side. Engage your core to come to sit for closing meditation. Remember to sit on your block to raise those hips up. Take a moment to notice the state of your mind. there's any more space here, gap between your thoughts. Observe your heart, your emotions, physical body, especially the hip area. Become aware of the awareness, the witnessing self, your true self. As always, do stay longer in the seated meditation to go deeper into that clarity and spaciousness. But if you're short on time, bring your palms together and rub them briskly. Cough them over your eyes. Breathing in and breathing out. Take a moment here, just calming, feeling the calm in the space in front of your eyes, quiet. I am this peaceful being. And then slowly release the hands down the front line of your body and back into your heart in Anjali Mudra, prayer pose. Take a little bow if you like, in gratitude to yourself for doing this one hour practice, one hour a little bit more. And do practice it often as you can, or any of the hip postures as often as you can, to stay free and clear. Let us share the benefits of our practice with all beings, may all beings Feel free and clear, be peaceful and calm, healthy and strong. And may all beings remember their divine nature with each breath. Namaste. Thanks again for doing this practice with me. And remember to like, subscribe and share if you enjoyed it. See you next time.